Hey everyone, this is CLR Gaming. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. It's good to have you guys. We did it! Welcome to my 100 sub special. 100 subs. Wow. Man, seems like we just did the uh, 60 sub special. It's kind of crazy. Some days you're like, man, we haven't hit 100 yet. And there's other days where you're like, man, I'm almost at 100. But uh, thank you guys so much. I don't know if you all saw the 60 sub special. If you haven't, I'd highly, highly, highly recommend it. But not right now. Don't leave. Don't leave. Stick around and then watch it after this. But in that one, I dive a little deeper into CLR. Tell you a little bit of my story and how we got here. This episode is going to be something like that. I'll try not to ramble too much. But I did want to do something special. Like I said in that one, we're going to celebrate the milestones. We're going to enjoy this YouTube journey. And we're going to acknowledge the accomplishments. So in the background, I was kind of debating what to play or what video game should be running. And... Uh, it was suggested I do Seven Days to Die, but then I know a lot of you don't watch Seven Days to Die. You're actually here for some of my other games. So I might do a two-part special, one where it's like a voiceover, and then the suggestion was to do that block challenge, 10 minutes to die, where there's a horde night every 10 minutes. Why you want to see me in panic mode for <laughs> the full video instead of most of the video is beyond me. But I might do that after this. But here I just wanted to, you know, say thank you. And I wanted to address some questions that I was given, I was asked. So in the background, I decided to run The Long Dart. I haven't really played this game. I've had it in my library for a while. It's a different style game, so I just wanted to give it a, a shot. So that's what's running in the background. I am I suck at this game. I don't know what it's about. Uh, please don't face palm too hard when I start throwing rocks at rabbits here in a minute. We do find a revolver, which was pretty cool. And that's about it. We just did a lot of looting in it. It's a very quote unquote calm game until the wolves come and get you. All right. I think that's all the housekeeping. So one of the questions that I was given by Jazz, and it's been a hot minute, but I, I didn't forget about it. He asked me, what are my favorite games to play? And which ones inspired you to do YouTube? So some my favorite games, I'm sure you guys can tell by now, is I cannot focus in on one game. Usually I'll get sucked into a game, play it for play that same game for a few months at the most, or I'll switch it up and I'll I'll be playing that game and this one and that one. That's my attention. I can't I can't stay on one game. I'll lose focus or I'll I just need to be doing something constantly. I always have to have a few things juggling in the air that keeps me sane. <laughs> Maybe that's the ER nurse in me. That's part of the reason I love the ER so much. You kind of, whatever walk through that door, you're responsible for taking care of. So whether it's abdominal pain or a chest pain or, you know, whatever came through that door. So that's kind of how I've always been. So as far as games, I, I love most games. If it's fun, I'm going to play it. There are Maybe two types of genres I don't play. I don't care for arcade style games too much. Just a, a shoot 'em up type where you kind of go into autopilot and, and you can zone out and just game like that. I, I don't care for that too much. <laughs> <laughs> I always got to be doing something. I got to be thinking. I want to get involved in a game. I want to get enthralled into it. I want to think, solve, solve problems, create, stuff like that. So arcade style, I don't mess with too much. And horror games, which I know that might be funny because I play um, Seven Days to Die. But that's not a, a true horror game. I just, I don't like horror games. I don't, I don't think it would... Well, maybe you guys are a bunch of sickos. I'm learning. So you might like to see me uh, stress out and, and have my heart rate up all the time. I don't know. But usually I, I don't touch horror games. I don't like that heart racing and jump scares and things like that. And if you know, if uh, I think I've said it in an episode once, I actually started Seven Days to Die with no zombies. I just would loot and build and that was it. I didn't want the zombies on. So we've come a long way. So who knows where I'll, I'll end up. So I like simulators. I like survival type games. But... But really, anything that's fun. I, I used to play Call of Duty a lot, and I'll get into that a little bit later. I play sports games, so baseball, football, basketball. Am I good at it? Absolutely not. <laughs> but I have fun, and that's the main part about this whole thing. It's just having fun. So what are some games that inspire me to do YouTube? Honestly, the very first game that I was like, man, I really want to, I would want to put this on YouTube was Minecraft. <laughs> And I think about putting Minecraft on the channel, but I don't know. Would you guys watch Minecraft? I wish I could build better. Minecraft has come a long way. I've been playing it for a very long time. I have not played it 
in a few years actually, but I, I do keep up with it. I watch videos on it. It's just amazing how far that game has come. There's not too many games like that that can survive the test of time. And I think it's pretty neat, a game that I played, you know, 10 years ago or longer. You know what? I don't want I don't want to do the math on those numbers. <laughs> I'm in a good mood. I don't want to ruin that. No, uh, but a game that I was playing at least 10 years ago, I'm able to play with my nephew now. And it's just as good, if not better, than it was. And it's crazy to see some of the stuff that these kids build on there. And uh, so, yeah, Minecraft was one of the first ones that inspired me. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. I love Minecraft. And then Seven Days to Die would have to be another one. I've put in a lot of hours into Seven Days to Die. It's just fun. I enjoy it. There's something about just looting. <laughs> it's just the looting aspect alone gets you hooked. So those two. But honestly, any game I play, I can turn it into a hot mess. And I've said it before, this is a gaming channel, but yeah, game, gaming is usually secondary. In my mind, it's secondary. Having a good time trying to get your mind off any troubles you might have or just, you know, give you a laugh for the day. Bring some positivity. There's so much negativity out there that that's, that's what this is really about. So, you know, and usually whatever game I get my hands on, I do something dumb or, or silly or it, it just becomes fun to watch. But usually when I'm playing with friends, you know, I crack them up and I crack myself up. So yeah, those are the ones that I can think of off off the top of my head. Ken Jans asked me what Nintendo system was my first. The first Nintendo system was the NES. Although I, I do believe we got an Atari from a garage sale. And I do remember playing Atari. The one that I remember besides Donkey Kong was Popeye. Do any of you remember? Probably not. Do any of you remember Popeye on Atari? Oh boy. We also had, uh, my dad's always tried to stay into electronic. So we had like a, one of those old fashioned Macintosh back in the day. I don't know if any of y'all remember, uh, what is it? Commando Keen number munchers. Anybody number munchers? But the one I remember the most is NES. He said, what are your biggest gaming memories? And he kind of shared with, with me how he, I believe it was Halo. Forgive me if I misquote. It's been a, it's been a while, right, Ken Jones? Uh, that he had played, I think it was Halo and that the AI kind of surprised him and did something that he wasn't expecting. That's the me a memory he shared with me. So he was asking me, what's my biggest gaming memory? Now I've been gaming for a hot minute. The actual first memory I have of gaming wasn't me gaming. It was my dad in the NES and he was playing Link and I actually have that game still. I have all my old uh, Super Nintendo games. We don't talk about my NES because um, when I moved out to live in my house my dad gave it to Goodwill with my games and I've, I've never recovered from that. I, I still have not recovered so we don't talk about that too much but Link did survive. I actually have a picture of it. I'll share it with you guys. In its case that's a that's a relic from the past but one of my earliest memories is watching him play it and just thinking i have no idea what's going on but this is cool and i need more of this in my life <laughs> and now um zelda is another game that i love especially the earlier nintendo 64 zelda has to be one of my favorites so another gaming memory a big one and i don't know if it's so much the game or the 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 lesson it taught, and maybe a little bit of both, right? That's what gaming's about. Is of all games, like I had, I'm a Mario, Mario Kart, Donkey Kong, uh, the Zeldas. All, out of all those games, you'd never guess which one I think of the most. And that's this one. I have it right in front of me. Super Bases Loaded for the Super Nintendo. Did any of you guys play this one? It's by far my favorite baseball game. By far. It's Till this day. Now I get confused with the new the new baseball games. I have tried the, the newer MLBs and for some reason I just go back to Super Bases Loaded. And the memory, I'll share it with you real quick. I was playing my dad. I was young. I guess I was being a bit of a brat as well. But I was losing and I had asked my dad to let me win. I said, Dad, I want to win. He said, I'm not going to let you win. You have to beat me. And of course I couldn't. I was trying my hardest, but I just wasn't that good. So I was so upset, I was I probably even cried that he didn't let me win. And I was so upset with it that I took the game and I played the shit out of it. I played it and played it and on the game it had AI that you could change the degree of difficulty I believe. So you could start easy, medium, hard, whatever. And that's what I did and I just kept at it, kept at it. Uh, till eventually, you know, I was getting my butt kicked by the AI. But eventually I was able to beat the AI at the hardest setting. 
And I thought, I'm ready now. Now I can take on my old man. And uh, we did. We, we played. We did a rematch later on. And I beat him. And that sense of accomplishment and I guess pride and, and just like you you worked hard at something. And not to get preachy, but if you guys saw my 60, you know, I do get a little preachy because of what I've been through. I think there's always, if you can get a lesson from something, you know, then that something was worth it. So it's amazing that that game, was it the game? The game was a vessel that you could use, but it taught a child at a young age to work hard, never give up, keep persevering. You're not always going to win. There's going to be people better than you. There's going to be AI better than you, but keep at it slowly and surely. And I would say that to you, if you have a dream, if there's something you want to do, keep persevering at it. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to get beat, but keep going. If it's something you truly care about, you truly want to see manifest in your life, you got to put the work into it, you know? So don't give up on it. So that's like one of my greatest um, gaming memories and of all games, it was with Super Bases Loaded. So yeah, and I could go on. Like another good one was um, Red Dead Redemption 2. I think games are kind of like music, right? When you, you can hear a song a hundred times and it not do anything. But if you're going through something in your life, if something has happened or, you know, you're just at a different stage of life and you listen to that song again, then it hits you in a whole different way. You hear lyrics you didn't hear before. Or it moves you in a way. I think gaming is like that. You can have a game and it, you know, it's a good game, but eh. but then you go back to it later on in life and you're like, it just hits different. You know what I mean? I think games are like that, but I will tell you that Red Dead Redemption, that's another one I love. I don't, I know it's old and, and people don't want to see it anymore, probably, but that's one that it's an amazing game. The attention to detail, the, it's one that you can get lost. And if I can get lost in a game and be transported to another place, you know, that's the kind of game for me. And when it came out, I was actually, I guess my body thought I was in the 1800s and I had developed a whooping cough. So I was coughing um, pretty bad every day for 120 days and you're like ah a cough no like I was passing out every single day for the first 90 days I had to be on oxygen I wasn't sleeping it was a whole mess so that game is one that I hold dear because it helped me through a very difficult time and I actually it was one of the first that I went online and actually talked to somebody usually I, I wouldn't uh, talk online with people but I took a chance on that one and I actually met some really great guys um, that we're still friends today and I'm so grateful for the relationship that we have. So, I mean, gaming is amazing and that's why I get upset when people are like, oh, games are bad. Nah, games are not bad. Games are like anything else in life. It's what you make out of them. So, yeah, I think I, I've rambled enough about those questions. If you guys have any other questions for me, that's the good thing about being a small channel, but we're not going to be a small channel for long. <laughs> so write your comments. I read every single one. I try and answer every single one. And I appreciate the, um, the conversation, you know, because that's what this is about. I want to build a positive community. It's about gaming, but it's also about you guys. Like if it wasn't for you, I would just be talking to myself, which, you know, I can keep myself company, but it's you guys that are turning this channel into something, into something great. And that's, that's the main focus of it is just having a good time playing some games along the way, maybe cracking you guys up. Hopefully you guys are probably calm down, CLR. You're not that funny. I have my moments. But no, if, if you have any questions, if you have suggestion for games, I know you can see that I, I need to have at least two or three games going at all times. If there's a game you would like to see me try, I am, I'm always willing to, to try new things, to learn, to grow. So you guys let me know. I know a lot of you came with Oregon Trail and Oregon Trail might be ending pretty soon. Not this week, maybe next week, the, the Oregon Trail one, the main one. And you guys gotta let me know what you want to see. I know Oxo suggested going back to this war of mine would you guys be interested in that it is it's a great game so we might go look at it again do you want to see me run through some more organ trails i've also been thinking about would you guys watch like a retro day where we i try and play some retro games like uh, I was looking at the older Oregon Trail. Maybe we could do a one-off episode of that. But please let me know. You know, let me know. I am open to suggestions. And I think that's it. Except there's two things that I have to include. I included them in the subspecial. So if you guys have seen it or heard it, you know, 
Sorry, not sorry. It's very rarely I have the opportunity to share with, you know, so many people. And if I can get this out, the more people that hear it, the better. If you haven't seen the 60 sub special, I'll give you the cliff notes. I talk about who I am, so you know, that I, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in nursing. I worked as an ER nurse for nearly a decade. I ended up getting really sick, basically with a freak accident. I had an anaphylactic reaction to a Mentos of all things. And ever since then, my health just kind of did deteriorated into the most recent and probably one of the worst ones that almost cost me my life was at the end of 2019, 2020. I had a bad asthma, I ended up getting pneumonia, sepsis, was in a coma for 10 days and uh, nearly passed away. So from that experience and the experience of working as a nurse and dealing with people at the end of their lives, let's just say I've learned a few things along the way. And I try and share two important things or two things that I feel are very important that I've experienced personally or I've seen personally from myself or patients or patients' families. So my words of wisdom. First one, tell the people you love, you love them as often as you can. You know how they say, don't go to bed angry. I say, don't go to the next room angry. This life can change in the snap of a finger, in the blink of an eye, and uh, you never know, right? So if there's... There's someone that you care about and you haven't talked to them in a while, you haven't said, I love them. What are you waiting for? Just do it. It Send a text, give them a call, just let them know. I personally, when I was on my deathbed, that's one of the last things that went through my mind was what was the last thing I told my family, the people that I cared about the most. What was the last text I sent them? That was something that ran through my mind. And fortunately for me, it was positive. It was, I love you. I'm proud of you. And I cannot imagine what it would be like being in that situation and having the last words, last thing I did or say be ugly, because there's no changing that. At that point, it's too late. You can't undo that. You can't fix it. And the amount of peace it brought me to know that my family knew, my friends knew that I loved them. I can't imagine being in that situation and then not getting that peace. Oh man, what a nightmare. What an absolute nightmare. So please, I, I beg you, you know, and I know there's things in this life that you can, <laughs> that are just not forgivable, that are, there's some things that can never be fixed. But as long as you have fixed them to a point where you have peace in your life, I'll tell you a lot of the problems are, have to deal with poor communication. And it takes a bigger person and it takes an adult to communicate. But that can solve so many problems. So if that's what you need to do, you know, <laughs> I urge you with everything I have, you will not believe the amount of patients and families I've dealt with that are just distraught because there is no fixing a broken situation at that point. So that's the first one. And the second one, which is a CLR quote, is don't get so busy living life that you forget to live it. And the example I used was, you know how when you leave work, you get in your car and before you know it, you're at home and you're like, how the hell did I get here? Your body just kind of autopiloted your way home. We do that with our lives. We get so caught up in the mundane, everyday, repetitive tasks that we go through the motions and we start just going through the motions. And I urge you, and guys, when I'm sharing like some words of wisdom, that by no means means is that how you say that? By no means mean that I have my shit together. These are just words of wisdom. I'm human. I'm trying to figure it out too. So don't think I, I'm, I'm perfect. Far from it. But I'd urge you to not go through the motions of life. And I kind of shared how like my favorite thing in this world, one of my favorite things is clouds. And it helps that clouds are in the sky <laughs> because you have to look up to see them. So that means you have to stop and look up. And I'd ask you, when was the last time you stopped and just looked up? So if you could do me a favor today, hopefully there's, hopefully you don't have a clear sky. Hopefully it's a cloudy day. If you could just stop and look up and just appreciate the clouds and just have that moment of stillness, you know, because I know how it is, man. It's hard out there. I get it. You have to, we say, corre, 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 and run, run, run all the time. But please, it's, this is, this life is short and you're going to be, quote unquote, home before you know it. So try and be present in as much of it as you can. All right, I I, I did some preachy preachy, but uh, I don't, and I said it in the other one, but I don't want 
you to have to go through some of the shit that I've gone through to get the lesson. Like, take advantage of it now. Call it a freebie. Like, oh, I don't have to go into a coma to get this? Some girl on YouTube's gonna tell me? All right, I'll take it and run. So take it and run, guys. But uh, from the bottom of this heart, from this fast beating, easily scarable heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. I um, look forward to growing with you guys. I look forward to the next 100 and I'm really looking forward to seeing where this is where this is going. So please know that this channel is your your guys channel as much as it is mine because without you this would be nothing, you know? This would be nothing. It's yours and it's mine and together we can work and make it uh, a great place. Now, to stop being so corny. <laughs> Hopefully there'll be a part two. I don't want to promise, but the part two will not be preachy preachy. It's going to be screaming. It's going to be panic inducing. It's going to be me trying to do 10 minute hordes, but that's going to do it for this one, guys. I appreciate you all watching. You have a good one. Stay safe. And until the next time, bye. 100 subs. No way.